Are you ready for it? All the unemployed master plumbers are going to lose their minds. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. It's plumbing day. The countertops are in and they're beautiful. They said my cabinets were perfectly installed. They've never seen cabinets this perfect in their entire life. Now, things didn't go so well. They smashed the floor. There's literally a one inch deep gouge. A customer was here when they were bringing these big, massive, seamless slabs in and there was a big smash. The customer looks up and they know do not raise your eyes when you smash the floor with a 500 pound slab of quartz. Do not look up. That admits guilt. I will be following up with you in a future video how this saga plays out, how Home Depot is going to remedy the massive gash in the floor. That's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about hooking up plumbing from going from two sinks to one sink and all the drama that's involved. Trust me, there's quite a bit. Don't just run off to Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace Hardware too quick because you're going to have to go again. And that's what today's video is going to focus on is one trip. We're going to put all things in as far as we can. We're going to list of parts, make one run, come back and do a final assembly. I'm doing my best with the lighting. Hopefully it's good enough for you to see what we're working with here. This is typically how a two sink setup is installed. This goes into this basin, this comes across, tees into here, goes down and out. Now when you're going to one sink, you get rid of this tail shaft, you get rid of this piece, you convert to this. This is now supposed to come straight down out of the garbage disposal and go right into there. But we've got a little angle of the dangle that doesn't quite bring us where we need to be. So I'm going to have to get another 45, 23, something like that to bring us in where we use this movement here to line up with the drop. Now there's another thing. These basins are a little bit deeper. That's going to lower your garbage disposal. It's going to lower the output of the garbage disposal. So I'm going to quick take this tail shaft off, mount up this 90 here, and see how far off we are. <sighs> Hopefully we can fit this right up here like that. I don't know. It'll be a close one. I may have to lower the drain. That will turn a 10 minute job into possibly a two to three hour job. Um, mostly because you gotta cut the wall out, cap things off. Um, there's another option is there's two drains back here. There's a dishwasher drain that is exposed into the cabinet, not in the wall. So what I would do is just cut this off, cap this off, and put a sanitary T into the dishwasher drain that is lower and go from there. But still, uh, there's running around, getting the right parts, and cutting and gluing and pasting and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with how a garbage disposal drain goes on. So this part drops in through the sink like this. Then this piece goes up. There's this little rubber gasket that does not make a seal. It's just there for looks pretty much. It goes on the bottom side. Then this goes on. Then this goes on. Got to back out, back out all these screws here. This is all going on underneath. Oops, the sink. And then this snap ring goes on like that. And then this 
drops down, rests on the snap ring, and then you tighten these screws tight to this, which squishes everything together. Now, you might be thinking, oh, what about that plumber putty, Hanneman? Well, they, we're going plumber putty list today. No plumber putty, just foam gaskety. And we will be lining this up so when you walk up to your sink, it is perfectly in alignment to read. Now, a lot of times I'll troll the I'll troll people and I'll put it in like this, and the YouTube commenters will lose their minds and say you put it in crooked. I did that on purpose just to annoy you. <laughs> All right, there's one. I'm gonna get you up here near nice and tight. Our gasket, just for more cushion for the pushing. And this piece. You now, just to give myself more room to work, I'm actually going to pull these screws right out because this is some awkward positioning, especially for you. If you can't bend over to tie your shoes, just give up. Just give up. Now, this is the tricky part holding all this together and getting this ring on. This is why you need to have a master plumber's license. Get in there, get in your hole. I'm gonna have to go in deep, deep. Get in there, get in there. If you have a lovely assistant, oh, that will help. Ooh. Boom, you hear that little clippity clip? That's it. That's your master plumber license right there. Now, this is where we get real close to finding out if today's gonna be a good day or a bad day. It is a Saturday afternoon. And the sink is installed by the countertop company. And the countertops were installed yesterday. They, in their rule book, they say 24 hours before you can hook plumbing up. And since I go above and beyond in everything I do, I'm here on a Saturday to hook the plumbing up. So they can have water as fast as possible. I'm not going to get too carried away with uh, getting this all cinched down just yet. I've got bigger fish to fry. And that fish is this 90 degree angle right here. Now, as I can see, we are. So, see this here? That means we have a big job ahead of us and we will be getting home later than expected. I'm going to have to tap into that drain line way over there with this pipe here. I'll cap this off, this goes into the wall, and that one right there is a drain pipe that goes right into the same, same drain. Now moving on to the next problem, which is the water lines need to be extended. As you can see, the water supply is way in the back and this is not long enough. I think we only need like eight inches, eight to 10 inches to make it work. So off to Home Depot we go. Okay, we're gonna make some handyman magic happen. Keep in mind the, the important water level line is this one here versus this water level here. So I gotta get home to my kids. They just woke up from a nap. Like I said, it's Saturday afternoon. I'm gonna do a little I'm gonna make water flow uphill for a few days till I have enough time and patience to do a proper, very, very expensive install. Are you ready for it? All the unemployed master plumbers are gonna go lose their minds. <laughs> One piece of magic.
looks pretty good. I wonder how long that would last if I left it like that. Before this would get clogged back up and ruin everything. All right, here's a quick shot of how this faucet goes together. Very simple, self-explanatory. This little silicone gasket has to get seated, go all the way on, seated in there, goes through the hole. This washer comes up through the hole. Then this wiggles all the way on, this washer here, nut. This nut wiggles all the way on, spin it all the way up, and then tighten these screws down against this washer. You can see how that silicone gasket goes right in there. Real nice seamless installation. There is a very fancy head that goes on here that you have to charge with a cell phone charger. All right, everybody, we got some new developments. As I was installing this, I started noticing that this is junk, this faucet here. And I asked the homeowner, hey, what brand faucet did you buy? And they said, I don't know. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> um, where'd you get it? Oh, off of Amazon. Well, this is a $75 touchless uh, there's another head that you actually charge with a cell phone charger and basically I said I don't trust this I would never put this in my house um, it, it goes perfectly well with the handyman special making water go uphill drain I did so they're ordering a name brand with a warranty it's gonna cost a lot more than this $76 Chinese POS but there will have water for a few days. Put down in the comments, is this risk even worth taking? Putting the $76 faucet. Keep in mind, this countertop over $10,000. These cabinets over $10,000. This is, I'm not going to tell you the total price of what this kitchen is, but you do not put $76 faucets and you do not put flexible hoses in a kitchen this expensive. But we're going to do it and test things out for a few days till we get through the weekend so we're about ready to turn this on hopefully things just don't go absolutely crazy all right fire in the hole make sure the water's off off okay nothing spraying yet gotta get in there real deep though check things out having another gamble Will my handyman special drain leak? Go down in the comments. Let me know. What do you think? Last check. This feels a little suspicious right there. That looks good. That looks good. Oh. All right. I'll bring it down. We'll look together. Looks nice. I just noticed that the plastic, the gaskets were just not normal, especially on the supply lines. I don't have much light to work with in here, but as much in as possible. So this has water. This has water, this has water, and obviously that one has water. Slip joints hold back water. They don't hold back a lot of pressure. But we are making water run uphill and out that drain. So next week, when they get a nicer, more reliable faucet, I'm going to come back and redo all of this. Do you have anything that looks like this underneath your sink? If you do, tell me about it. How long have you had it? Down in the comments. A lot of people ask about this here. This has a knockout this dishwasher drains up and over into that drain there. We're going to use this piece. We're going to put in a, a T right above that P trap and everything will be fine. We're going to get rid of all this whole flexi lexi flexible pipe thing. But I'm also looking uh, to make sure there's no leaks around here. Um, I'm going to have to get a new one of these. 
Uh, this has embossed engravings all the way around it. Uh, that's no good because you can't uh, get a seal around these silly engravings there. So they have more that don't have that on there. So I'm going to have to get a new one of these. But they've got water. This video is an example of what not to do. This is not a best practice drain install. It's also an example of what you can do in a pinch and it will work. How long will it work? We're not going to find out. I have come across similar installs in customers houses many times over the years. What can happen is those flexible ripples can fill up and collect food debris that go through your garbage disposal and it will gradually restrict the flow. For all the unemployed master plumbers out there, Please tell me, uh, I really want to know how, you're, how you feel about this. The comments are a safe space, especially for you plumbers. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.